Hey y'all, welcome to Sidewander Shed. And guess what? For once, we're in the shed. What I have here is a 5.2 liter Magnum, 318 cubic inch. But this is the Magnum model. And this I believe I will be putting in my truck. My truck has a 360 cubic inch LA engine in it. And what I wanna go through right now is uh, just a few differences between the uh, Magnums and the LA. Um, some that are real easy to spot. First uh, first one is, if you, uh, if you ever run across one of these engines and you're wondering if it's an LA or a Magnum, first telltale just walking up to it is if it has a serpentine belt, most likely it's an LA. I mean, I'm sorry, most likely it's a Magnum. The LAs almost exclusively had the old V-belts. All, all the Magnums have serpentines. But again, that can be changed. Second is the intake manifold. All Magnums are multi-port, and they have what they call a beer keg intake manifold on them. So if you're looking at an engine that's never been touched and it has this uh, type of manifold on it, which I will show you in detail a little bit later, it's probably a Magnum. But the biggest tell is honestly the valve covers. The valve covers have 10 bolts holding them on. I believe the LAs only have six. I'll have to check, that's what I have in my truck, but I believe it's only six. Anyway, they have 10. Those cannot be changed, although the whole head can be changed. You can put Magnum heads on an LA engine, but you can't go the other way around because of the oiling system and the valve train. But anyway, that's just a few quick, quick ways to tell whether it's a Magnum or an LA. And, uh, I'll be right back and uh, let me take a few things off this engine here and uh, we'll get more into it. Okay, well what I've done, and excuse me here, I'm trying to move this around on the stand, on the tripod. But what I have done on the engine, let me get this squared away. There we go. What I've done on the engine is I've taken the water pump off and I took the harmonic balancer and pulley off. And one of the other differences between an LA and a Magnum is the timing case cover, which is this right here. The water pump on a Magnum turns in the opposite direction as an LA. There is also no port on this side of the timing case cover for a manual fuel pump. All LA engines, like I said, were electronic fuel injection. So they did not need a manual fuel pump. All right, let me take a few more things off, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and I've taken the uh, valve covers, the intake manifold, and the timing chain cover off of this engine. Let's see if we can't get you a little bit better view. Again, pardon me, I'm messing with the tripod. Let's set you up here so I can carry you a little bit easier. All right, and this engine I have not cleaned. This is the way it was. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a pretty, pretty clean engine. I'm fairly impressed. I mean, yeah, there's dirt and grime on the outer parts, but as far as the inside goes, there's not really 
any sludge in it. Everything looks pretty good. Um, it's supposed to have about 40,000 miles on it, and I, I think it does. And it's in, uh, it's in pretty good shape. Now here up front, this I will be replacing too. The uh, timing chain's got a little bit of wear in it. But, again, clean. Clean. I haven't wiped it down. You can still see all the sludge on the outside of it. But, yeah, this engine is uh, really fairly clean. I'm happy with it. Um, the other thing that's different, the major difference between the LA engines and the Magnums, the Magnums have stud type rocker arms on them, just like a GM. The uh, LAs have a shaft type rocker, uh, rocker arm set up like Fords do. And uh, this one here, Magnums, all Magnums, have hydraulic roller lifters. And that is what this is for right here, is to keep the lifters from spinning. Now the difference in the casting is too, on an LA, on an old LA engine that has the flat tappet, these bosses where the lifters go is a little bit shorter, about a quarter of an inch shorter. Um, if I'm right, might be a little bit off on that, but they are shorter. However, you can get um, roller lifters and you can modify the, the old uh, LA engines flat tappets to run roller lifters, but uh, they come, the Magnums come stock from the factory with this uh, casting. For roller lifters. Um, my engine is a 92 and from 90, 91, 92 the 360 LA's all came factory with uh, roller cams and roller lifters. Uh, starting in 89 the 318 LA's came stock from the factory with a roller cam and roller lifter and so they changed the uh, the casting a little bit uh, bigger uh, bigger bosses for the lifters um, the biggest difference too is the shape of the head the ports and everything on a magnum head is a lot different than the LA's uh, the valves are bigger the valve train is different and the oiling is different um, magnum's oil the top end from the galley, the oil galley that runs through here, up through the lifter, up through the push rod, and to each rocker arm. Uh, the push rods are hollow. They have a hole in them, and the oil comes up. LA engines, their push rods are solid. No oil comes through them. What they have is on the block, they have an oil passage that comes up, comes through the head, goes to the uh, rod, the shaft, through the bosses on the shaft, underneath the uh, rocker arms, that pushes oil up through that. Um, that's why you cannot put magnum heads or put, I'm sorry, put LA heads on a Magnum engine. There's no way to oil them properly. Um, some people do, and they still oil them this way. I don't know. I wouldn't do it for a daily driver. For a race engine, you know, might have to run a couple hundred miles, or a drag engine, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Um, but for a daily driver, I would not put LA heads on a Magnum block. Uh, they just don't have the proper oiling. Uh, with that being said, there's that damn beer keg intake manifold. That thing is a monster. Um, 
I can't use it on my truck for the simple fact I don't have the computer system and all the electronics to run the multi-port fuel injection on it. Uh, I do have a throttle body fuel injection, but that means that my injectors, I have two of them, and they sit right inside here of the throttle body. This one, you have individual fuel injectors on it. That's what these are right here. And so each cylinder has a fuel injector. And it's also one of the reasons why you don't have to worry so much about porting or polishing the intake manifold. I mean, they, they shoot directly into the ports. Into the ports on the head. These things here, all you have to worry about with these is airflow. And, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be um, porting this, porting these, uh, these heads, as well as giving them a valve job. I was just going to put an intake manifold on this, a distributor, and go carburetor, you know, and um, I was also going to change it to a V-belt system. But when I took the oil pan off, we... Uh, we found some slight, very slight, but still slight bushing or bearing, main bearing problems. Actually, not even main bearing. Main bearing seemed fine so far, but uh, connecting rod bearing problems. So that leaves me with a couple of options. What I can do is I could run it. It's not that bad. I could run it just like it is, and it probably last. I don't know, another 40, 50,000 miles. Might even last longer, depending on how much I abuse it. Knowing myself, yeah, we're looking at about 40,000 miles. But you could run this engine fine, be perfect, just to drop it in and run it the way it is. I could take the crank out, take it to the machine shop, have them double check it, maybe polish it, maybe have to have it ground, I'm not sure, and then put uh, new bearings in. And that would be perfectly fine. I can get a new crankshaft and a new set of bearings, drop them in. Perfect. Absolutely outstanding. Price wise for everything, I'm thinking I'm putting a stroker kit in this. Uh, not a real big one. Basically, what they used to do with these uh, 5.2s, 318s. They used to take a 360 crankshaft and turn down the main uh, the main bearing because they're they're smaller. The crankshaft, the bearings in a 318 is smaller than on a 360, but a 360 has a longer stroke, and so they used to grind down. The uh, main journals, that's the word I'm looking for, the main journal on a 360 crankshaft and put it in the 318s. And that would usually bring it up to around a 344 cubic inch, somewhere on there, depending on if you bored it out or not. I think a standard bore brings it up to 344 cubic inches. Not quite sure, I'd have to double check. But anyway... Now, Mopar Performance sells. It's a cast. It's not a forged crank, but I'm not building a race engine. But they sell a cast crank. Um, has the same stroke as a 360, but it has the uh, main journals sized for a 318, so it's a bolt-in. And it's such a small stroker, the block doesn't need any machining. I can put that in there. What I do need to get after that, though, would be uh, shorter pistons and rings, of course. Um, I'm thinking of going that route and putting a little bit more aggressive cam in it, but not high RPM cam, more like an RV cam. I'm looking more for torque. This is going in a pickup truck. Um, I've had this truck now going on four years. It's seen 4,500 RPMs maybe three times. I don't really run it that hard as far as high RPMs. So, again, 
anything I do to this engine, I'm not looking for top end performance, I'm looking for bottom end torque. And uh, I think that's what I might end up doing with this, because the price difference for what I need to do for the bottom end is not that much more than going with the stroker. Um, yeah, uh, the work, because I am going to do some head work on it, and the uh, pistons and rings, they're going to set me back, you know, probably an extra $800. But I think it'll be worth it in the end. Anyway, this is going to be a fall-winter project because, again, I'm a working stiff and I don't have a crap load of money. And the 360 engine in my truck is still working fine and dandy. But anyway, this is where I'm at right now. And, uh... We'll try and keep you updated. And yeah, it's going to be a long process. Uh, depending on the financial situation and what I decide to do and what I find when I start uh, tearing more of this engine apart will dictate whether this engine gets in the truck this fall, over the winter, or next spring. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards early spring. I'll have this engine together and be getting ready to drop it in the truck. Anyway, I'd like to say also thank you. Thank you to all my subscribers and everything. I know I haven't been putting out anything regular. Um, I did a foolish thing. I went and I bought an actual uh, video camera. And I have several videos on it. What I don't have is a computer so I can upload anything or edit anything. And I cannot hook it to this phone to do the editing and uploading. So, yeah, I got a bunch of videos sitting on a nice little... Uh, camera and I uh, can't do anything with it right now so anyway bear with me but uh, anyway also thank you all very much for watching and subscribing and if you would go ahead hit that like button and uh, share anyway y'all take care and uh, be safe out there